hello hello it's good to be back hi everybody <laughs> For those of you who have just tuned in, it will be really helpful if you could share this link so that you will also let the rest of your friends on your Facebook know that I'm going on live, that we are going to be on live now. So then that will help spread the message. You can see, it's, it's not, some notes here. Hi Michelle, hello. Okay, I'm going to get my boys in later on while we wait for more viewers to come in first. I hope your weekend has been a good one. And it's been a few days since I came on live. I think um, it's been, I really do miss um, going on live, but I um, hope you've also enjoyed yourself with uh, Rachel. Okay, the boys are waiting very impatiently at the side. Okay, uh, waiting to join in today. Okay, so what we're going to have today is, um, if you've seen our messages, you know, and our pictures, okay, um, it is actually cooking with mama, and that's me. And I hope uh, for some of you, you know, who have already prepared your ingredients, waiting to start with your child, or if not, you know, um, you're actually preparing, you know, to cook it with me. So if you really did, okay, and if you did, please, you know, you'd be really help and encouraging to take a picture of yourself with your ingredients and just tag it to Min Mac Group. Okay, so that would be really so fun to have uh, all of us you know, cooking together. Okay, all right. So, um, well, we had a connection problem yesterday going on to Facebook Live. Um, I hope it's not the same problem today, okay, because uh, it will be a pity. Of course, you can still catch us on our videos, but you know sometimes on live it's actually really um, more fun because you know you get um, interaction like on the spot when you've got questions you know we actually answer you on the spot okay I think uh, let's start hello hi okay right hi good afternoon everybody thank you for tuning in um, what we're going to do today is actually omelette pinwheels so um, we will introduce in, in the ingredients first and then later on I'll get my boys to come in because you know how kids, if you don't keep them occupied, you can get very restless, right? So they are being really excited already, you know, to start. So we're just going to, hi! <laughs> so we're just going to introduce in ingredients first and then later on I'll get them to come in, alright? So my boys are just waiting there, looking at me eagerly to join us. Okay, so for today, the omelette pinwheel, basically it is a um, recipe made from eggs and a whole array of vegetables and um, it is actually really colourful. So when a dish is very colourful, uh, most of the time we try to add in nutrients that are um, very high, very rich in colour. So that is um, why we call it a colourful pinwheel. Alright, so the main ingredients we have are our eggs. All right. So this, there are three eggs in here. If you want to make it in bigger batches, you want more servings, you can have um, more of it. So these three eggs, actually depending on the thickness of your omelette you're going to make later on, it allows around two omelettes. Okay, so three eggs to two omelettes. And then we have also our Chinese spinach. Later on, I'll talk a little bit more about Chinese spinach and why I chose these rather than the English ones. Um, I understand my recipe, I put Chinese baby spinach. So if you can, it will be good to get the baby ones because uh, they're really tender and they cook really quick. All right, so these are the Chinese spinach. And also we have our cherry tomatoes. Okay, so I cut this into quarters like that. So basically, it is longitudinal, and then it's cut like that. Okay, so cut into quarters. Why? Because you're gonna put it lay it on the omelette, so you want it to be longish. All right. So um, sometimes you'll be thinking, why not use the bigger type of tomatoes? Cherry tomatoes are sweeter and they're also tangier. So for kids, right, they prefer this um, cherry tomatoes more than the huge big ones all right so you can use this but of course if you don't have them at home you know maybe you're just trying to see if any uh, leftover ingredients you can use the huge tomatoes that's fine also all right then we have so we have green and our red correct okay so then we need a yellow 
So I'm using a yellow capsicum today. So yellow capsicum are sweeter than our green ones. So for this yellow capsicum, I understand sometimes a child doesn't like green capsicums. Are there other things you can put in for yellow, you know, for yellow um, ingredients? Then maybe my viewers, maybe you want to let me know what other yellow ingredients you can put in besides yellow capsicum. Okay, you just want to have some a little bit of interaction with you. Hi Shui, hello. Any yellow capsicums uh, that we can put? Yellow capsicum, no. Any other yellow ingredients you can put in besides yellow capsicum? Anybody? You know, when we are doing a live show. Yes, correct, Kelly. Corn, that's right. Okay, so we can put corn. Uh, yes, we have also our cheese. But it's not so obvious, so um, baby corn, you can put in strips of baby corn, but of course for that you need to cook it first, you either steam it or blanch it, or you can stir fry it. And then we have also the baby corn, uh, the, the niblet, so you can put that in as well. Okay. But I really highly recommend putting in capsicum, because the earlier you introduce capsicum to your child, right, um, the more open they are to the taste. And uh, if you think it's a little bit too raw to give them now, you can actually cook it a little. So then it's not so pungent in that sense, all right? But my boys love this like raw, it's very sweet. All right, then we have our, uh, the chicken filet. So they are raw, raw chicken filet. Okay, I'm going to cook it in front of you later on. So I just added a little bit of salt and I'm going to marinate it with some rosemary leaves. So basically just very little salt and some rosemary leaves. Okay, so the dried ones. So rosemary goes really well with chicken. Um, the reason why we are introducing herbs in here is because, uh, again, the earlier you introduce herbs in your cooking to your child, the more open they are to it. And there are times I understand some parents, you know, might not be so open to putting herbs in there because they might be afraid that, you know, cooking of it, you know, the, the chicken with some herbs might make the food really um, strong. So, but don't worry, you know, herbs, so if some mummies will ask me, is it okay to add herbs in your chicken, in your cooking, that's totally fine. Okay, of course, during after they have weaning, that means gone through weaning, six months later on, you know, you can start giving them slowly. Do not add any salt in your food, right? Uh, the longer you can delay, the better. However, you're going to send them to preschool, then that's the point of the time where they will be introduced a little bit of salt. So, um, that's the time also where you might want to add a little bit, but try to stay off from all these gravies and sauces because they don't need it. Okay, there's actually natural sodium already in the food, all right? Okay, great. And then we have our eggs and then we have milk with milk you know, in the fridge because I don't want to put it out first um, because the weather is really hot so I don't want it to mix, um, to turn bad. Then I've got cheddar cheese, grated cheddar cheese and also cream cheese. That's meant for the spread. Okay, all right. So now let's get our boys in. Hi boys, come in now. Both of you. <laughs> Javier and Daryl, say hello to everybody. Hello. Okay, are you ready to join me? Yes. Are you ready yes. to join me? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Alright, so what I need to for you to do now, okay, is to help me cut up the spinach. Alright, for those of you, mummies out there, if you have um, your child with you, helping you now, okay, what you need to do is, I understand that I told you to just leave the, just wash the spinach, alright, and it's going to be like that. So what you need to get them to do is to cut it, alright. So I've prepared some scissors. Okay, so mummy, no worries. If you think that if you don't have any scissors at home like that, it's okay. You can get them to pluck out the leaves like this. Alright, so just separate it from the stem. Alright, like this. Okay, then mummy, later on, you can quickly just, you know, snip it with your scissors. Alright, so for those of you who have a handy scissors around, just go and pick it up from your kitchen. Alright, if your child is old enough to handle a pair of scissors. Alright, of course. Okay, now I've separated it into two bowls. I know mummies, I'm sure you know that, right? You need to be very fair and square when you're, when you're giving them things, okay? So, separate it like that. You've got three kids, separate into three. Alright, or if not, then later on they can do other duties. But make sure you have to be fair. Alright, boys, tie down your scissors. Okay? So, what I need to do for me now, slowly, okay? You have a lot of time. Is to cut it up. Did I can? Okay? Yeah, face it down, hold the bowl. Alright? Yeah, careful your fingers. Don't stick your fingers in the bowl, huh? Yes, correct, and cut it slowly. Alright, so while they are cutting up the vegetables, I'm going to pan fry the chicken strips first. You know, they've been really excited when they know that they are going to help me. You know, they kept asking, so I'm pretty happy that they are at least excited. 
Okay, so in another, yes, correct, Jiva, it's alright. It's okay. Leave it aside. Okay, no problem with that. Okay. <laughs> alright, so what we need to do now is to pan fry the chicken. Ooh, are you okay? Pick it like this. Open. Oh, what happened to the scissors? Okay. Okay, ma. Yes, yes. Okay, come. Like this, come on, D. Okay. Careful, can you hold it like this, face down? Correct. Okay, don't stick your fingers inside, okay, boys? Okay. Alright, so as I am uh, getting them to cut out the spinach, I will now fry the chicken slices. Add a little bit of uh, oil in here. Alright. Slowly. So you need to keep that occupied or cutting. Okay, Daryl, no need to mash it up. Just in bite size. Okay, you must dig it. Okay, Jiva. Alright. Okay, so I'm gonna now pan fry the chicken. So then, uh, you know, later on they will get, will help me shred it. Alright. Yes, correct. That's great. Thank you. Can you put it down here first? Alright. Okay, after you're done, I need you to put the vegetables, pour your vegetables in here. You need a fork to scrape it all out. Okay, great. Okay, yeah, just thank you. Okay, where can? You want to borrow cocoa scissors? I think yours. Huh? Okay. Okay, just pan fry the, the chicken strips. Another tip for you is that if you have got leftover chicken, maybe let's say you have ordered a roast chicken the night before, you know, and you have got some leftover chicken, or maybe who knows you've been eating. Maybe like, yes, can. Maybe you have got uh, KFC, for example, then you have got leftover chicken. Save it up and you can use it for this dish as well. So, what you really need to do is just to shred it up. Yes, is that okay? Can Coco help you a little? Just to break up the pieces over there? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Alright, so now I'm just going to pan fry the chicken. Also, I was saying you've got leftover chicken, so you can uh, save it. Right, and then leave it in the fridge the next day. Can the pan, uh, Didi? Not so close, okay? Put a little bit more, because I realise the oil is not enough. Okay, can you pour it right into the pan there, please? Okay, so, you know, with this um, project, or rather I call it a cooking project, kids would really be happy to help out, because after their home-based learning, they're pretty quite, really quite free. You know, and uh, it's good to get them to pick up skills like cooking because it teaches them coordination skills and also even things like if you're measuring out flour or eggs, that will help them in, you know, their measuring skills like in math as well. So it's actually pretty cool to have them. Alright, so how many of you here are cooking? Mm -hmm. <laughs> It is okay if you're not, it's alright. Okay, but if you are, just give a shout out, you know, give a thumbs up. You know, it's really, really encouraging. But if not, I understand, right? No problem. Try to see that I'm doing this and then later on. Oh, don't go pack it up later on. You need it. Okay, so this is how the chicken will look like. Can you smell the rosemary, boys? Right? Okay, so I'm just gonna slowly pan fry it till it's cooked. So the next half you need to help me do, okay, is to cut up the capsicum. Alright, so for the capsicum, I'm okay, just leave it aside first, okay? So I'm gonna go cook the vegetables later on. Here. Okay, and the capsicum, here you go. Alright, so again, two kids, two portions, three kids, three portions, four kids, maybe four portions. Alright, anyway, you cook a lot more. So, what I need you to do is, come, let me help you. Okay, I'm going to just cook it right at the bottom here. Okay, so you will have a see, um, if you, you're worried for your child to handle the scissors and then holding, holding it right like that. Okay, let me just lower the pan first, in case my chicken gets overcooked. Huh? Okay, hang on Okay, so as I was saying, you can use a, a fork like that and hook it right at the bottom of the capsicum and then get your child to hold it like that and just cut it into strips. So then that will quite protect their hands, right? If you are, they are still not confident of holding a knife on the chopping board, right? So cut it into strips. So, okay, so what I need to do, right, when you cut the strips, you can hold this like that. Okay. And just cut it like in this thickness. Okay, the thinner the better. Can you help me do that? Okay, this is for TT. Hang on, I'm for you. Can you use that? Okay. Another fork for you. Okay, Jabra, like this. Right. There you go. 
Okay, remember to leave room for your fingers in there. If the capsicum drops out, what do you do? Okay, that's right. Okay, thank you. Okay, so hang from my chicken. Some more. Cut it slowly, just a bit too thick. Coco, can you do it a little bit thinner? Did you want to cut in your half first? Okay, then later on you can. Yes, that's right. Okay, that's good. Coco little, yeah, that's all right, Didi. Later on, we'll help you cut this. All right, so I know you want to get that part out first. Yeah. Okay, so cutting the capsicums into sweet boys. You all like capsicum? Yeah. Really? You like it raw or cook? Cook. Cook. Didi, what other herbs do you like? You don't tell the rest of the viewers. What do you eat all the time? You pick from our plate. Something green and with curly leaves. What do you like? You know the herb. You can remember. What do you like? What is it? You can remember. You like parsley, right? You don't like parsley. You used to like parsley. I like parsley. Oh, you like parsley. Can you don't? Oh, okay. Hmm? You like parsley, Coco? Yeah, you pick it up right from our plate. Okay, I've got friends that don't like parsley. I've got a son that loves parsley. Okay. Are you okay? Alright. Okay, Coco, you're doing a great job. Titi also. Yes, this is much better. That's right. Can I just it like that? Yeah, can. Or if not, you can poke it right through again and cut again. So then that will be really thin. Because we don't want our omelette to be so thick. Huh? Okay. Alright, so when I'm going to pan fry the chicken, it's really lucky now. Sorry, the pan is a bit uh, deep. So I'm just going to show you how it looks like like that. You can see. Nice and brown with herbs on top. Alright, so just gonna make sure that it's cooked. Just gonna cook it through to make sure that it's cooked. Because uh, this is going to be the only time cooking the chicken. Because later on, when you're going to use, uh, put it in the omelette, you're not going to cook it anymore. Right? So you gotta really make sure that the chicken is, is, is well cooked. So later on, we'll do something more challenging, and that is to cook the omelette. Right? Okay. Any questions out there, my viewers? You're pretty quiet today. Are you busy all cooking now? Handling the chart is okay? Yeah, cut it. Yeah, cut. Okay, Coco, once you're done okay, with the capsicum, I want you to put it back in here again. Alright? Okay, just a little minute, a few more minutes then, we can uh, remove the chicken from the pan. Alright, so chicken breast on its own is time protein. And um, it is really easy to cook. The other protein you can put in as well. You can put in beef strips if you like. Um, you can add in tuna, but um, for today's um, recipe, I prefer to use chicken because it's got more of the bite than there, right? So, and that will be easy to find also with, you know, sometimes we've got some leftover chicken in the fridge or, you know, we normally we have got some chicken breast right away at home. Alright, and I also like to debunk the fact that chicken fillets are actually really tender. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So once we are done, we are going to leave it off from the pan. Okay, and we are going to get the kids to shred it on later on. Alright, thank you, Didi. It's not mine. It's not yours, it's okay. Just leave it at the side first. That's your pop off bowl, is it? That's alright. Can okay, just let the chicken cool a little? Okay, so this is how you will look. This is the chicken, this is the chicken fillets. Just a little bit of salt and rosemary. Okay. So, looking very tender and cooked. Right. What I need to do now is to just remove this from their own one. Yeah. find cheese. Yes, correct. Later on, okay. Did I tell you what? You go and get the cheese, the cream cheese and the milk from the fridge first. Thank you. The mm -hmm. milk is here already, yeah. And the other cheese. All right. Okay. Next, I'm going to do now stir fry the vegetables. Okay. You okay, just stir frying it. Okay, thank you, Didi. Okay. So, uh, you can blanch it if you like. Okay, but I prefer to actually hand, uh, stir fry it. Thank you. So we have um, other ingredients which is the cream cheese. This is low fat cream cheese, Philadelphia brand, if you like. Yeah, thank you, Carol. Okay, and then we have got cheddar cheese. Okay, just leave it out here first. Okay, combine it together. Okay. Yeah. Come on, in there. Okay, put it in. Alright. Any questions out there, guys? <laughs> no? Pretty quiet. Okay, I'm going to stir fry the spinach now. Okay, thank you. Just put it at the side first. Okay, next I need you to help me do. What I need to help you do is to shred the chicken. Okay? You can smell the vegetables, right? How do you shred the chicken? Yeah, give me a moment. Okay, I want to talk about the 
uh, vegetables first. Okay, the chicken. Again, I'm going to pour it out into two for you. Okay. So what you need to do, I need to shred it into thin slices or thinly. So what you need to do is to do this. Hang on. Eh? Okay, use the two fork and then just separate it like that. So you get all these shreds of chicken. Do it slowly, okay? Alright, so I'll leave you another piece. Hang on, baby. Okay, alright, this is for you and that's for you. Thank you. Let's put it aside here. Clean out a little bit. Okay, so remember I was telling you I want to talk about the spinach. So for baby spinach, Chinese spinach, it is very, uh, it's not so astringent. Astringent, or rather not so bitter, meaning to say that when you introduce it to kids, um, it has got this sweetness in them, and hence, if it's the first time they're going to eat it, let's say at weaning, alright, I will really recommend the first vegetable to be, will be the Chinese spinach, because if you compare it with the um, English spinach, um, the Chinese spinach is sweeter and it's not so bitter. So kids at their, at their age tend to pick up bitterness pretty quick. So that's also the time when if you choose to win them with um, vegetables that can, can be quite bitter to them, they are not likely to accept it. So that's when mummy starts to give up. Okay, and that's the start of when you know your child um, might not prefer vegetables that much. So the first winning food, um, after rice cereal of course, it will the sequence will be I really recommend for rice first and then later on to vegetables, which is the Chinese spinach. Then later on we go on to yes, yeah, that's right. And then go on to fruit. Correct. Thank you. Doing a great job, who are you? Can you help Papa, okay? Next time. Later on for dinner, Mama. <laughs> okay, so, um, the, so the Chinese spinach is really high in iron. It is a non heme iron, meaning to say that it does, is not from an animal source or plant source. Hence, um, plant source irons are good sources of iron, especially for a person of vegetarian diet. However, for a non heme iron, meaning to say iron from um, non-animal sources, means vegetable sources, it's not so easy to cook, to absorb, sorry. Okay, so it's not so easy to absorb, hence you need to eat it with um, orange, orange juice for example, because you need to vitamin C to absorb properly. So the iron in there, right, you need uh, uh, vitamin C to be absorbed. Okay, so the vegetables are almost done. Alright, and for Chinese spinach, especially the baby ones, they are really easy to cook and they cook quite fast. So another way to cook it really is to put it into the um, soup okay, or you can uh, steam it. Right, um, it's for a child that are um, really much younger, you can still give them porridge. Do not put it right into the pan you know, or right into the porridge. What you need to do is to steam it separately from the porridge. Okay. Alright, so I'm not going to... Yeah, I'm just going to put it in here first. Oh, your arm's tired already, Papa, from shredding it, is it? You show me the muscles. Wow, okay. Doing stretches. Painful. How did that happen? <laughs> it's hard work, is it? Do you want why? <laughs> Coco, do you just say they want to offer Titi another one? <laughs> so you can have a lot of time. You can know hurry. Oh, oh Titi, that's a huge chunk of chicken. Leave it there. Okay. Alright. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Any reason using a pot to fry is it? Uh, no, there's no reason because I just needed another pan. So the most convenient is to take another pan. So you can use a pan like that to cook because I want to keep this pan really clean to fry the omelette later on. That's the reason why. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Corn. That's right. Yellow cherry tomatoes. Oh, make sure that's a really interesting idea you have there. Okay. Uh, Michelle, we can make. You can put banana in there in the omelette if you're making a savory one. A sweet, a sweet dessert, okay? Corn, alright. Hello, Michelle. Okay, let's see. What other sources of vitamin C can you eat with non heme vegetables? Orange juice is too acidic for you. Alright, hi Beatrice, it's good to be to see you. Um, well, you can have other fruit, um, other, so basically by um, guava. Guava is also high in vitamin C, alright, so you don't find that um, so citrusy. Um, then you can go for blueberries, that's also okay, alright? Okay, now next, what are we gonna do? So still achy, is it, Koko, your arm? So much hard work. You can eat more later on, okay? Titi, are you doing okay? Yes, alright, come like this way so you can. Whoa, you can have a rest later on, Mama, fry the egg, okay? Can? I need to rest. You need to rest, alright. Why, was it the soccer you were playing just now outside our house? No. Then you're so tired. <laughs> okay, next, I'm going to beat up the egg. Okay, so these three eggs here. So for those of you who just joined in, I was saying that these three eggs will make around two omelettes. Alright, so eggs are a good source of protein 
And sometimes with eggs, uh, I've got mummies asking me um, if eggs are okay for them to, uh, is it okay for a child to eat an egg every day? Um, the answer is no, even though they might be exercising, you know, a lot or, you know, very active. But there's got nothing to do with them having a lot more eggs. Basically, eggs gives you the cholesterol, though um, the cholesterol in our body are not so quite much affected by the cholesterol in the eggs. However, they do add up okay, if we eat more than, say, five to six in a week. So for child, for children, I would still recommend keeping to the recommended guideline, and that is no more than four eggs in a week. Now I'm going to add in the milk, all right? Titi was supposed to add in the milk for me, but I think it's very busy now. Okay, so Titi, Mama, add the milk already, okay? Alright, I hope you can see. Okay, and um, for eggs, it has got, you know, okay, it's a very good protein. And Why? It, <laughs> it's not this proper offering the uh, thing to him. Why? Too, too much, okay, can. Alright, so I was saying, eggs are pretty high in protein. There's another substance called choline. Basically, this choline you can find in uh, milk powders. They are actually a substance that's really important for metabolic metabolism, meaning of our daily processes, and also good for our brain and nerve functions. That's why eggs right, are pretty nutritious and they are a really good source of choline for all of us. Hence, we always link it to it to being a brain food. Right? So a little bit more about eggs is that um, sometimes mommy will ask me, you know, how do you, um, when do you actually recommend or introduce eggs for a child who's really, really young? So at six months, you can start giving them the egg yolk. Right? So that's egg yolk. But um, only after one years old, then start giving them the egg white, fully cooked. Okay. The reason why is because, okay, just let me start up the pan first. Okay. So um, for egg yolk, it is less allergenic, meaning to say that it might not cause allergies that um, much. Right? Okay, Coco, you want to... Very really good job. Okay, everybody look at this. So see, Daryl has shredded it really well. So to give him encouragement, give him a thumbs up. <laughs> Everybody, you know, he gets very excited when he see all the hearts. You know, the thumbs up. Okay? Titi doing very well too. Yay, Titi. You know, this is Titi's uh, creation. Titi, look. Everybody, wow. Thumbs up, everybody. Look, this is Titi's version of his chicken shreds. Okay, good job, boys. You can stand here and wait for Mama while I fry the egg. You want to stand here and wait for me? Okay, good. Alright, thank you. Good job, boys. Okay, do some stretching first. Huh? <laughs> okay, so that was last thing. Alright, um, what was I saying about egg yolk? Oh yes, so egg yolk. Right, egg yolks are pretty uh, good sauce. So, um, oh yes, introducing to children. Right, so egg yolks are not so um, easy to cause an allergy. But only after the age of one years old, then um, as you grow older, the immune system gets stronger, then you start giving them egg white. It is also the time where it coincides with the MMR injection. So that's the time when egg whites are actually part of the injection. So it's important to start giving them uh, the egg white after one years old. Okay, alright. So now I'm going to lay the pan. Okay, for this omelette, I'm going to cook. Okay, before that, I already cooked the omelette. I just want to show you how it looks like. Okay, uh, it looks like a giraffe actually, right boys? Does it? Yeah, <laughs> maybe you should call it giraffe, giraffe pinwheel. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just gonna turn like that, okay? But I just want to cook it first to show all of you. Right, so for this egg omelette, right, you need to be very patient. Your pan must be just well, uh, just warm, medium warm, not deep heat. Because, right, if it's very high heat, what's gonna happen is that the egg will not cook so well. It will burn very fast on the side before you can flip it over, right? Okay, so for the omelette, how do you do it? You, you put it right in the middle. Okay, and then you can uh, add that milk in there already. Okay. So make sure your pan is well oiled. Uh, it will really help if you're using a non-stick pan. Okay, and a pan and a fine pan. The cream cheese, I'll do it later on. I'll spread it onto the omelette before I roll it up. Yeah. Okay, thank you for reminding me. Right, I'm gonna show you. Okay, so I just want to make it a little bit thicker. If you're afraid of the egg, um, having holes at the bottom, then make sure that you know you pour it a little bit thicker. You can swirl the pan a little around just to make sure that the eggs are actually quite um, evenly coated. You can evenly coat the pan. Okay. Yay! See? Lots of people saying well done to you. 
Okay, I can help. Okay. You're gonna roll it up. Just that. Yeah, later on we'll do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm just gonna put this up in here. You gotta draw a no spot. Let's just do one first. Can? roll it up and that's when the, um, the kids can get to be involved again okay just let me rearrange a little first okay next what we need to do now okay mama is going to spread the cheese first okay because uh, the omelette it's a little bit it's easy to break so later on you can help me put the other ingredients okay don't break it. you don't break it yeah ask me not to break it right okay so this cream cheese you can take it out from the uh, fridge first just a while before you're going to do this omelette because you don't want it to keep it out in the open for too long right so you're going to spread the cream cheese onto the omelette skin lightly okay because um oh yes forgot to tell you also that added milk that's for vegetables that's the spinach later on add it in also right okay um i was saying they add milk into the cheese because you want the omelette to look add milk into the eggs you add milk in it's on here it shrank when you cook it it doesn't look that much now, right? Titi, if you didn't hear, Titi was asking why is there so little vegetables now? It's all the combination you and Kokos uh, work. It looks so small. It looks so little, right? Because you will shrink when you cook vegetables. Okay? Oh yeah, anyway I was saying that you add milk into the omelette um, to make it fluffier and smoother. Right? So just a little bit more. Okay, so make sure you spread you can spread the cream cheese all over. Side. Okay, why are we adding cream cheese already? It's just to add another texture to it and the taste. Um, I'm going for low fat cream cheese. Okay, there's no need to have so much fat um, in this meal. Okay, so get cream cheese in here. Gives you a little bit of calcium as well. Alright, boys, next I want you to lay the cheddar cheese. Yes, in your hands. You washed it again just now, correct? Yeah. Did you lay? Oh, you want to do also a bit? Okay, come, we do. I'll tell you what. I've got another one here. Later on, I'll do together. How about that? Okay, because I want it to just have one we make together. Yeah, Titi, I'll uh, keep copper and put more. Just put all over. There's only one more. Then. It's okay, later on we make. Come, quick. <laughs> all of the cheese. No, not all. That's good enough already. Then? Yes. No, some more here. Can you see? Can you see? Yes, okay. Copper, Titi. Come, Titi, come. Yeah, Titi, come here. Yes, that's right. Okay, next. That's Can it. You, know? you want some more? Some more cheese? You love it? Okay, then put a little bit more. Okay, just try to have your ingredients right in the middle because at the sides, right, you start to fall off. You know, though kids, you know, they would love to, to, to have a lot more cheese. So try to have it right a little bit more in the middle so that, you know, when you cut it out, right, the cheese doesn't fall off. Okay, done? Alright, next, what shall we add next? Chicken. Chicken, okay. Add a little bit from yours and a little bit from Titi's plate. Around okay, Titi. And here. Yes, correct. Same, you can do it the same. You're doing a great job with the cheese. So same, okay, for chicken. Okay, add in the chicken slices. Yay, Rachel's going to try it. Great. Yeah. Titi, your turn. A bit more at the sides. Next, we put spinach. Next, we put spinach, is it? Okay, yeah, sure. Capsicum, capsicum first or? Capsicum first, sure. Okay, that's enough. Boys is going to be very, very sick. <laughs> okay, we can do that later on. Okay, is it capsicum or spinach? Um, or caps. tomatoes? Which one? Capsicum. Capsicum first. Okay, for capsicum, you need to lay it right here. Like uh, you know how the trains line up in the cars line up, right? Circle? No, <laughs> like that. Parallel. Just across. That's right. Correct. So yes, another street. Yeah, lining up. Like this. That's right. Okay, now you can see that's yellow and white already in here. Then can we do an X? No, you can't do an X because I need to roll it up. Just do it like another line here, just beside it. Okay. All right. Great. One more line here. No, that's good enough. Okay. Next, we're gonna add in our tomatoes. So for the tomatoes, okay, it's gonna be longish like that, right? So you add it in like this also, so they will line in up. The middle. No, not not so much to the sides. In the middle. Okay. So we're adding in our red color already. It's like a rainbow. That's right. A rainbow. But what is lacking in the rainbow? Green. Huh? Green color. The green which is the spinach. How about the purple? Where can you get purple from? Lettuce. Lettuce, that's right. Lettuce. Correct. Good job. Okay, come put it in the middle. Okay. 
Other ingredients, you can put in things like raisins to increase the iron content of this dish. Um, also, even the sweetness like prunes. That's alright. Okay, next mm. then we get the vegetables. Just a little mm. at the side, the same like this. Okay? So you add in the final touch, which is our vegetables. Just spinach. Mm. It's a very thick roll, you know, boys. It's going to be super thick. <laughs> we'll make one more. You make one more? Yeah. Two there. That's right. Later on, okay? You Let me cut this out first and show our viewers how you look like when you cut it at the side. Okay, great, boys. That's, that's enough. Okay, I think we did overdid a little bit too much on the uh, capsicum. You can eat it if you want. Yummy! Alright. Okay, so Wait, this is it raw? Yes, of course. This is how you look like before you roll it up. Okay? So now what you need to do Oh yeah. Okay. Is to get the toothpicks first. Okay. Even if you roll it up, you need to get toothpicks in hand handy because you will need to poke it right through in there. Alright? Uh later on I'll, I'll do that for you. It's okay, I'll just leave it there first. <laughs> Are we gonna make our own yeah, later on, okay? Yeah, when you're cooking it. Yeah. Uh, later on, I'll tell you when. Okay, so have a few toothpicks ready because you need to secure it before you cut it up. Okay, let's put it at the side first. Over here. Make the cherry tomato, I like cherry. Yeah, you can, you can eat that if you want now. Okay, so uh, we use eggs very often. So this is another way where you can use eggs in there. It is a very convenient way to add protein into your food and also at the same time um, have got this binding effect when you add in eggs into your omelette or I mean into your pancakes for example. Okay. Yes, boys, it's super thick. <laughs> okay, it's alright. Okay, let's just uh, put this in. So I just want to show, okay, you're going to roll it up, push it in, so you, wrap, so you can use this like a wrap. Okay, but just that it's a very high protein one. Look at that! A gigantic wrap! Okay. So, so big. So big. Okay, so now you need to secure it. So how you put your toothpick is that you will put it... Uh, it's got maybe say... So the thickness... Oh, <laughs> the thickness of the roll. Okay, so the, the, there will be a separation beside it. Okay, <laughs> see laughing. <laughs> Hang on, I just... Get another one. Okay, mm -hmm. alright. Okay, I'm gonna cut it out and show the viewers how it looks like inside, okay? Then later on you get to try. Okay, so using a really sharp knife, cut it like this. Then we can make our own one. Yeah, later on, okay? How for how? Okay, just wanna show our viewers how it looks right inside because of the color. Right? So when you cut it up, right, you look like a pinwheel because it looks like a roll. Like that. Oops, something like sushi. Like sushi, that's right. Okay, can't food. Correct. I'm gonna show you now, huh? Are we gonna make it in our in this video? Hmm? Uh, our own. Okay, I just wanna show everyone this is how it looks like at the side. Okay, it's a very gigantic, generous bite over here. You see? It's the plate blocking. Mm -hmm. Came out and it's okay, never mind. Okay, alright. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is for you, Daryl. I'll give you. I'll give you another plate. Did you hang on? Yeah, can we try it? Of course you can. No. Careful the toothpick, yes. Here you go. Oh, it dropped. You will? It's okay, use your hands. Whoa. Pick up the toothpick. Pick up. Don't take How it out. Nice. Hmm? Okay, you want to take it out? Did it? It's okay? It's in here so Coco can be in the frame also. Yeah. Careful yeah, the toothpick, really okay? Nice. Hmm? That's really nice. Is it salty enough? You taste the chicken? Careful the toothpick, okay? You might want to take it out also just in case you you know poke your face with it. <laughs> okay, so um I hope everybody here will try it. It is an interesting spin to how the omelette will look like. Alright, and basically, most importantly, we didn't add any salt in here except for a little salt we add in your chicken. Um, the flavouring agents in here are actually from the cheese and things like tomatoes where they are, you know, they've got natural flavours in there that will perk up any dish. Right, so um, for nutritious food, you know, there's always no need to put in so much of the sauces. So in over here, we actually really want to let all of you know that, you know, it is, it is fun. And at the same time, cooking is fine. At the same time, it is not difficult to make a nutritious snack for your child and even for yourself. 
Okay, so for those of you who are making it right in front while watching with me, thank you so much. Okay, please take a picture of it and then tag me in that group. For those of you who has telling me that you're gonna do it after this, thank you so much as well. All right, and um, okay, Felicia, I I don't know. I think fur kids cannot eat eggs, right? I don't know. I don't have a dog. I've got two real kids. I don't have fur kid, so I maybe not. <laughs> Alright, okay, great. So, um, as I was saying, try this at home. Okay, so stay tuned. At, um, if you have not added yourself or not joined our Telegram channel, please do that. Download the Telegram app. Look for Healthy SG. If you have already, please spread the word. Let all your friends and relatives know that there's this awesome Telegram channel where MinMed Group is posting lots of information in there, keeping you informed of all our schedules and recipes. Secondly, if you have joined our active CV challenge already, very good. If you haven't, we have got this challenge out there where you will stay tuned to our schedules first. Go on to our exercise in Zoom. Video yourself or take a picture of yourself doing the exercise with our trainers. Load the picture onto your Facebook or Instagram and tag at MinMac Group. And do you know what you're going to get? What's, what's the price again, boys? I look at the camera and say fifty dollar and two C vouchers. Yeah, and you how do you win it? Do you need to tag a lot of times? You need to tag yourself a lot of times to get the fifty dollar and two C voucher. That's why that time Mama asked you to take picture for me, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, so everybody, I will look forward to seeing your pictures, either of your pictures of your cooking or pictures of your exercise. Okay, till then I will see you tomorrow. So for tomorrow it's at twelve thirty, and I'm going to teach you how to make two beverages. One good enough for adult, mm -hmm. another one for the child. Can so till then, so till then, I will see you tomorrow, and we'll talk more tomorrow again. Bye bye. Bye bye. Say bye bye, boys. Bye bye to the viewers. Okay.